So you can see the uh, live, this is actually the live day footage taken from a vehicle being ridden. So, okay. Can you see it? Yeah, so you can see the live video of the vehicle being ridden. So it's like, you know, the navigation is on the left, telling you to take a left turn after 80 meters. And um, this is already in motion, so it is already doing its stuff. And this is going to come standard on every vehicle. So it's going to be mobile enabled, so you have to enter a destination into your mobile phones. And the screen will do. So the screen will tell you what uh, turns you have to take and when. One of the features that comes on OTA is dark and mode, dark and light mode. Uh, our vehicles are anyways capable of switching into dark and light mode depending upon the time of the day. But, but even above that, if at all you prefer driving into dark mode more than white, you can still go into the menu and change it up. So uh, also, also when it comes to like you know, so we were very much carried away, carried away with like you know the fact of having a display, right, right on the vehicle. We can show you n number of features on it, and it has taken us like you know a lot of time to define what to show now because uh, this is so lucrative, right? If you look at this, it's a five inch of blank canvas for you to like you know show whatever you want to show on the vehicle. And frankly speaking, we have two seventy odd parameters that we can show you at any given day in time. So we wanted to make sure. <laughs> so a lot of lot of tech has gone into it, right? So we have lot of lot of like you know parameters that are there on the vehicles that can be shown to the consumers right away, right? But then we had to actually go to a point and decide what is imperative or what is important for the consumer and what is not. And uh, that's where we had to like, you know, compromise a little bit on what to show. So basically you can get very accurate uh, set of charts currently. So obviously this is going to be updated over a period of time when we see what is necessary and what is not over the period of AB testing with actual live customers. But the basic vehicle that ship out will have the uh, range functions on it. So this is the range where you see. So it shows you the actual real time range. Turn by turn navigation is going to be constant on all the vehicles. It's also going to show you the actual battery SOC and the, and the current that you're drawing out of the vehicles right away. So yeah, uh, having a mobile app is compulsory, right? You cannot not you cannot not have a mobile app in this generation, right? So that's nothing new. But then uh, we had to make an application that was completely, you know, uh, very much user oriented, right? Uh, that's what everybody does. But we had to make sure that we go a point ahead, and uh, you know, in a way, make a digital clone of the vehicle, because what is on the vehicle is what has to be shown on the apps. So we didn't want to have any frills attached to it. So we didn't want to like you know filter any data out of it. Key by you know we wanted we don't want any sort of manipulation happening. So uh, basically uh, to give you a better perspective into this, all our telemetry data goes to the servers, and our apps fetch the data from the servers. It, not the not the other way around where you know you have the mobile phone connected to the vehicle and it gives you the vehicle data and stuff like that. So we, we are in true sense taking the data back to the servers and then bringing it back to your back to your application all in real time using our very advanced M2M technologies, which I think Nino will cover up later. So um, also, servicing is a big hassle, right? All the time that you have to like you know go and drop your vehicles to the service stations, and you know you have to wait for the vehicles to get serviced and get it back, right? Uh, not with Earth Energy. Essentially, what we are doing here is that um, you just have to like you know book a service appointment through your application, and you'll be appointed a slot. Just go there and drop your bike or request for a pickup. It's as, it's, it's as easy as that. So um, yeah. So coming to the point where you know we started out, right? So Indian consumer ko kya chahiye rehta? So price sensitive one actually, as I mentioned, we are going to be industry first in that segment of that price point we are talking about here. All these smart scooters, smart electric scooters, uh, daily commute. So basically to make his daily commute easier, we have the smart true features on the vehicles. Uh, it's powerful, we'll come to the specs, for, specs very soon. Uh, for the mileage conscious, it goes 100 kilometers per charge. And at the same time, you know, for the tech enthusiasts, we have the entire host of, uh, you know, uh, smart features on it. That's going to be very lucrative for a, for a, you know the vehicle owners basically. So um, launching in front of you today for the first time, the all new electric vehicles, the entire range of electric vehicles from Earth Energy.
about the design philosophy behind these lovely two wheelers. So, uh, starting off, our objective, as mentioned earlier, was a completely 100% made in India vehicle, right? That's what we achieved. That's what we are, I mean, that's what our goal is. So, uh, in that sense, we wanted to create a lovely identity for India's bright electric future. And I think we are a step closer to that here. So, uh, one second. So talking a bit more about our first step, the blank canvas. So the idea was to create something that was a bit conventional at the same time, yet look in its own way futuristic. So strike a perfect balance between the conventional and the futuristic feeling. So uh, to talk to you more about uh, in detail, the Glide Plus. So for the first time ever, the Glide Plus. Uh, the inspiration here is basically uh, the forms and the shapes of eagles because we wanted to create something very sporty, at the same time very spacious and comfortable. Now, uh, the idea here was to, if you can see the front over here, the entire volume is pushed a little bit forward to give that aggressive sporty stance to it. And all the lines here are a little bit minimalistic, however, Later on, when you'll get a closer look at the vehicle, you can see that in the back and in the front, the vehicle has a very, very strong character to it. Um, in terms of uh, proportions, we have tried to keep it, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of a maxi scooter and uh, an actual regular city scooter. So in all, we give you sportiness, agility, along with spaciousness and comfort. So, yeah. So, talking a bit about the color variants, uh, this one here is a very unique color that we have created. And uh, the speciality about it is that now it might seem a little grayish to you, but actually when you take it out in the sunlight, it's blue, and at night it looks black. So, it's like you have three bikes, three scooters in one with three different color variants. So, there is this one with the jet black, and also, of course, for those who want the standard, the white with the black edition. And also we have the third one with the race decals, as you can see over here, and you can customize it a bit more. But these are the standard race decals that we will be offering on the scooter here. So now moving on a bit to the, uh, the Evolve Z. Now, the Evolve Z's character is basically inspired by the shapes and structures of arrows. So we took a lot of inspiration from arrowheads and that's why we got this sporty proportion for the Evolve Z. Uh, the entire volume of the bike might look like a daily commuter to you, but focusing a bit more on the tank area, we've tried to make it super sporty. So when you're actually sitting on it, you might feel that you're on a sports bike, but it is as comfortable as a daily commuter. And that was the key objective and the key goal for this beauty over here. And looking at the tail, also in the picture over there, you can have a look at it. It has a very diamond shaped structure so that the rider can sit perfectly on this and have no, you know, uh, you know, uh, be really comfortable. That's, that's what I meant. So yeah, that was about the Evolve Z and the color variants. As in the scooter, it's the same for the Evolve Z with the race decals, as you can see here. The same, the Marshall Gray with the Jet Black and the White with the Jet Black. So now moving on to the Evolve R. Now the first look at the Evolve R, you can see that it is massive. It is muscular and it has a dominance on the stage. I'm sure when you guys entered here, the first thing you saw was this beast under the black uh, hood. So basically the Evolve R and the Evolve Z both have a very similar chemistry between them. And that was the key idea over here because talking philosophically, the soul of both these bikes are the same. However, they still have a different character. The uh, inspiration here are same like arrowheads, but more softer and sculpted shapes. And uh, the key uh, idea my, my here was to showcase different power than and what dominance it's going to be for like, you know, anyone else, right? So what happens is and that when a, a person is riding the same, vehicle, 
the you units, units the consume only vehicles the pattern of his driving is going to be very different as compared to the person who's only 50, 50 or 60 kg so achieving that accuracy of you know the margin of error to go to a point and and you know uh, spot down to a to a unit of margin of error of almost zero is, is a huge feat in itself uh, coming to the truly modular architecture right so i don't know how many of you guys uh, you know notice this but the cruiser and the commuter right that's the two segments that we have we are putting on the stage today the evolve war and the evolve z uh, both of them share a share a very common element and uh, it's, it's difficult it's not it's very difficult to miss out but is this part uh, that's the that's the uh, monocoque chassis that we call it and that's a complete aluminum cast uh, we have we have been able to achieve uh, a lot of weight reduction on the vehicle because if you really look into perspective uh, your average petrol vehicles weigh somewhere around 120 kg 120 kg uh, for every you know 180 cc motorcycle right but when it comes to giving similar power and performance in terms of a petrol or an electric vehicle a uh, lot of things have to be taken into consideration one of them being you know the the amount of battery that goes into it the amount of power that has to be like, you know punched into the vehicle uh, the drivetrain uh, density right the power density of the drivetrain and everything uh, so uh, we have been able to uh, you know so it was so initially the prototypes that we have ever built weighed almost over 200 kgs uh, very initially i think on third prototype out of the seven we built uh, and we had to drastically think of a solution to reduce the reduce the uh, overall weight of the vehicle and it there was no other way to achieve it but to go to a point and you know adapt a um, aluminum casing that's going to be the main element uh, of the entire you know the the main body of the vehicle uh, now coming to the point of the safety right so uh, to give you a perspective uh, if you take a 1 mm uh, 1 mm ms sheet versus a 3 mm uh, 3 mm aluminum sheet the weight reduction the weight that is uh, reduced is almost around four per, four times so you're reducing the weight four times due to the energy density, due to the uh, weight density, but at the same time you're still maintaining the similar amount of strength that is there in the one mm ms sheet. So uh, the batteries are very well protected. So if you look over here, uh, I can I, I think you can see it. The top part of the vehicle over here on the on the stage itself. Also this part down has the battery architecture completely built in halfway through, and the other halfway is the artificially cooled um, artificially cooled drivetrain. So these vehicles are ultra powerful, right? 5.3 kilowatt, 12 kilowatt peak is not small amount, right? So um, it's, it's a huge amount of power that's going and flowing through the vehicle. The heat has to be dissipated, dissipated somehow. And we do it through using active cooling systems. Uh, we can discuss this obviously later. But uh, so, you know, that's the, that's the point where the bottom part of the casing is being used. So the bottom part from here downwards is the cooling system and the drivetrain of the vehicle. Uh, with the with the uh, modular drivetrain that we're talking about here, or the modular aluminium chassis that we're talking about here, we have been able to achieve around 28 percent cost reduction when it comes to launching multiple vehicles in the market. So that's a huge feat, right? Because uh, when you want to like you know launch multiple products in the market, you cannot have single different different parts for every single vehicle that goes out. You would increase your uh, you increase your spare parts cost so heavily. Your OEM integrations would increase so heavily, and it would be a nightmare to like you know uh, go across and you know be able to. Communicate with each of them and get the vehicles made, right? So we have to we have to come up with a solution where we can launch multiple form factors or multiple uh, you know sections of vehicles, uh, like you know this is a commuter and cruiser, right? They're completely different in terms of a term of segment of a vehicle, but we have been able to achieve a modularity in that, and that itself is a huge. Hear me using the huge feet terms lot in the presentation today, because definitely when we are when we are presenting these vehicles to you. They are filled with features that actually command these sort of like you know uh, remarks on them. They are they are actually in true way industry first in every way every standard that we're talking about here. Charging of the EVs right that's the biggest problem that everyone faces today. Like how do I charge my EV? How do I get a wire from my uh, from my apartment to the to your to your vehicle to charge and stuff like that right? But uh, with our vehicles it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, first of all to give you a very 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 you know comforting news. All the three vehicles that you see on the stage today are compatible with every public charging station that's going to be set up in India. Our our major 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 uh, you know the uh, core essence of making these vehicles was to like you know not make mix make, make something that's very proprietary, right? So if you if you look uh, at different vehicle uh, architectures today in the market, right? So they have like you know we have a few Chinese scooters, we have a few uh, you know a few Indian OEMs as well doing it, but all of them have their own proprietary connectors, right? Uh, how this increases the complexity of the entire system is that uh, the so for the vehicle OEM like us it becomes very easy to use a proprietary connector 
because nobody else would be able to draw power from our charging stations. We would be able to have better control over the vehicles. We can actually have a monopoly over our vehicles, right? But that's not what we want to do at Earth Energy. We want to have a truly open architecture where everybody is open to choose where they charge, how they charge, and how fast they charge, right? Because um, everybody has different needs, right? I cannot, I cannot govern someone to slow charge or like you know charge at a rate at which the OEM wants them to, to charge. So we wanted to make sure that you know you have a complete control over where you want to charge and how you want to charge. Hence, all the vehicles are compatible with all the public charging stations in the in, in all across the globe, basically. Also, uh, how do you charge the vehicles? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Once you buy a vehicle, you get a charger complimentary that is going to be put up in your in your you know wherever you want to put it. If you have a if you have a uh, you know fixed parking spot, well and good, we can put it on a wall. If you don't have a fixed parking spot and a floating one, we have the one over here where you can see it's on a it's mounted on a stand, and this can be put up or very 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 rigidly on the ground to wherever you are parking your vehicle. We would love to like you know have questions from you taken offline. We'll be we'll always be here to like you know bring great products to you, and you know with the affordable price that is there that is on the stage right. So thank you so much guys for coming in and appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.